My name is Julie Wanjiro Wanderi and uh, I'm 29 years old. I have Vitu Ligo. My name is Tom Radido. I'm 28 years old. I've got Vitu Ligo. I'm Felix Owin. I'm from Kisumu. I'm 19 years old and I have Vitu Ligo. What I wanted to see was my skin coming back to normal, but that wasn't um, visible at that time. It makes me feel so bad. Like, you look strange among people. My type of vitiligo, because there are different types, my type of vitiligo is called vulgaris, and vulgaris is scattered patterns all over the body. So it changes from time to time. So, um, for example, uh, like in 2013, 2014, I was almost white. It had turned almost white. It would, I only had spots, brown spots on the face, but I turned almost white. And then, as in every year, I'm different. If you look at the patterns, it changes every time. So for me, I enjoy it because I know every year there's a different pattern which is going to form around my face or my, my skin. Unlike albinism, if you just do um, a contrast a description of the two, with albinism, everybody gets to know about it from the very beginning when it's in the books, it's in the primary books, in the secondary books and everything. But then some of the skin conditions that we like, which are very rare, but almost similar to how they affect people who have albinism. People do not know, and they need avenues to get to understand what this really is. My vitiligo started in uh, 2008, so I've had vitiligo for 10 years now. It started when I was one and a half years old, and um, so basically I've lived with it for over 27 years. It started in to a nine and it started in my, in my, my lips. My parents thought, thought that I was taking alcohol, but that was not the case. It was at the age of five, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's when everybody, when I go somewhere, they would just point at me and ask, uh, why do you have white spots around your eyes? Because that's where it started. It started from here. Mm -hmm. from this cheekbone here. Mm -hmm. It was actually so small. It was more like a spot, a spot, brown lump, small brown lump. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when I applied the hydrocortisone cream, it uh, spread all over now. It started spreading all over. So actually I assumed maybe that's the way it's healing up. So when um, after around, I think, a month or so, that's the time we realized now it's getting serious. Lianza kwa mdomo, na hapa kwa mkono. Kuna, kuna makingine hapa ilianza hapo kwa mkono. Sasa hapo ndi ilika kabisa. Sasa vila lilimaliza form 4-2016. Ndiwe ika spread uku. Ika spread hadi kwa shingo. Ika anza kuspread. Vila lilimaliza form 4. But ime stay ifu kwa mdomo tuna hapa for long. Kuna shituka tu. There is no reaction. Usikiki tu yote. Kuna shituka tu imetan. Imetan, imetan. Kuna shituka tu imetoka mali pengine. Hata mkona ikuwa ilikuwa tupua. Nika shituka tu zime anza kutoka kutoka. Anko yangu alishtuka sana juu. Hakuna vile mtu waneza juu wa jina ya ugonjwa na jiti bayake. Hainilisikia mbaa sana. My mom herself did not know um, what was wrong with me. So at first uh, when she discovered I had it, since she's the first person who discovered I had it, took me to hospital to be checked. That is after chasing away like five house girls, thinking that they had burnt me. So then is when my mom, after visiting five hospitals, she got to conclude, got to a conclusion that is vitiligo, that it is one of the doctors told her. And um, for me to be told what is vitiligo, I was told much, much later, when I was around nine years, eight years, when I could understand what it is. But before that, my mom used to tell me it is my color, and I, this is the way the Lord made me, and I should accept myself. The first hospital we went to, they gave us. Um, they told me I was suffering from a certain blood condition at that time. I can't remember the name, but it wasn't vitiligo. <clears throat> so they tested me of so many other diseases. They tested me of high blood pressure. They tested me of uh, HIV. They tested tested me of uh, malaria. Uh, they tested me of so many conditions in my system. But then eventually they give me CNS drugs because they were assuming that I'm suffering from a depression or I was stressed up of sort. And it had gone into the, my internal systems and it was now affecting me. 
So I used those drugs for three months, and every other time I used them, my head was spinning for the three months. But then there were no any changes that I was experiencing even after using those drugs. Me, when I checked myself in the mirror, I was seeing all of my lips were turning red again. <clears throat> so I stopped those drugs. So I went to high school, and I went to research. I went to Google and Galia, to Google and Galia. I found the only Niliona, this, nini, this, this is something about white patches. Nikawa na imani kwa viti laigo. So sa hapo ndiyo nili, nilienda nikambia my parents. Actually, I don't have parents. I stay with my uncle. So nikaenda nikambia my uncle. This disease is called viti laigo. It's not a disease, actually. It's a condition. This condition is called viti laigo. So when I told him this viti laigo, he also Googled and found that it's viti laigo. So he took me to hospital. Moi referral hospital, I went to Moi. They told me that it's untreatable, it's, it cannot be treated. I was actually depressed. <clears throat> I was so stressed up about the condition because it wasn't going, the drugs that I was using, there were no any changes. So it had actually spread so fast. In primary, basically, I, I was being bullied a lot because of my skin color. And, uh, but it reached a point that I got to embrace myself, but it, that was when I was in class eight. I'd gotten tired of being bullied, and so there was this particular girl who used to bully me a lot and make fun of me. So at that time, there was this uh, fights people close with in school in closing days, so I closed her and I fought with her. So after fighting with her and I kind of won the fight, somehow I took charge of my life after that. I saw I could defend myself, I can protect myself, and everybody in the school stopped bullying me from then. But my class one till class seven there, it wasn't easy. I used to be alone. I only had one friend, and, uh, and basically because she was a Muslim and she didn't want to talk much with the rest of the people. For high school was uh, also I took advantage of my skin color, and since I knew I was, I was to be bullied when I entered Form 1, I entered and um, I told everybody that it is contagious, which is not contagious. So where I'd leave my bucket or my clothes, no one would touch any of my stuff when I was in Form 1. So basically in Form 1, I survived it. But when I reached in Form 2, some of my friends noticed that I was lying to them. <laughs> so I, t I opened up and told them, uh, it's not contagious. There are various theories, but what is known is that it's an autoimmune condition where your own body attacks the cells that produce skin color. What is also known is that exposure to certain chemicals uh, can bring about vitiligo. So we'd call that occupational vitiligo. For certain, seeing a doctor helps you to be reassured that you are not also having a because the condition can be associated with other conditions which are serious, like uh, thyroid diseases are common. So you need to be reassured by your doctor that you're not having an ongoing chronic illness. So just seeing a doctor reassures you. Tom sought care from a dermatologist who put him on treatment, a variety of medicines for two years that only changed the size of his pockets. This was after months of using Chinese medicine that cost almost the same. It cost around 17,000 every month. That's, that's the amount I used to pay for the drugs. In the combination of the green tea, uh, the small mustard seed tablets, and uh, those green gram kind of drugs, they all used to cost around 12,000 shillings, around 500, 12,000 shillings. There is no cure for vitiligo, but the condition can be controlled. It's preferable that once a person notices the white patches on his skin, that he sees a doctor, either a general practitioner, preferably a clinical dermatologist as soon as possible, because the various ranges of treatment can help to restore some of the pigment. Though this is a chronic condition, it's lifelong. It has no cure, but it can be controlled. Once you see the dermatologist and they are certain that the diagnosis is vitiligo because there are other diseases that can mimic vitiligo, then they can start you on what we call topical creams, which can either be steroids or something we call calcineurin inhibitors. What this do is 
reduce the immune response that is making you lose your skin color. That's why it's best as soon as you notice the patches to see a clinical dermatologist. There's also, the treatment is individualized depending on the distribution. So either the topical creams can be enough. If a patient chooses to be more aggressive about the treatment, we have what we call light therapy or phototherapy, which can go for about a year. And the treatments go probably once to twice or thrice weekly. The duration, I mean, the frequency depends on what the clinical dermatologist prescribes. That needs a patient who's very aggressive and patient and has the time. There's something called eczema laser, which is probably found in uh, private dermatology clinics, not here, which works also very well. Grafting is also a... Uh, an option that can probably be followed up with by the plastic surgeon. One spot will appear after a year, after one year you see another spot. After nine months or so you see another spot. So so those spots again they, they try to uh, join each other like that so that the black spot appears. And then I actually had them even on my neck and even on my back here. Uh, the only ones that I've not seen a lot of changes are the ones that are on, on my arms. There's never been a lot of changes and also, uh, well, the, the funny thing is, sometimes you get changes in some other parts of the body, but then again you get to have relapses or you get other forming on the other side of the, of the, of the body. Cream. Nika, nika enda, nika nunua, nika paka, hakuna change, nika isha, nika enda, tena nika nunua, hakuna change, sasa sija nunua ingine tena, nika acha. Lakini the government was giving us sunscreens, nata nilipewa tu siku moja. Sunscreen is important, yes, because the patches that have no melanin, melanin pigmentation are prone to developing cancer if they are exposed to the harmful sun's rays over a long period. So it's important for people with vitiligo to wear sunscreen. Even if you have not yet seen a doctor, that can be the first thing you can do, especially if your vitiligo is on sun-exposed areas. For me, I love the way I look. Because I stand out, I'm unique, and I love unique things. So for me, let's just say I embraced myself a long time. Because I, when I was a girl, my aunt used to send makeup from abroad so that I can be applied. And I couldn't even stand being with it. I used to feel like my face is heavy. I only applied it for two days, and I was like, no, I just want to stay the way I am. In most cases, it does not spread um, aggressively to the rest of the body. It can remain stable or localized, but the uh, treatments that you apply help to reduce the spread. I was really feeling bad, stressful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. like well, being neglected. Nikitembea, like nikitembea hata town, watu wana niangalia sana, like mtu wana shituka. Watu watu, kwanza mwoso watoto wana niuliza, ulichomeka, ulichomeka. Mi watoto waki niuliza, nga nilichomeka na wambia tu, yes, nilichomeka. Na laki, lakini watu wakubwa na wabianga, go and research about vitiligo. Yeah. Because I was very active in drama, in, uh, in handball, and music festival. All this, I was always cheerful, so uh, I kind of got attention of the many students. Of, they took me in an easy way. It actually takes a, a thick skin to live with the condition because the sentiments you get are always negative. And on the road, you'd find somebody, ah, she, she stole in Kiswahili, as in Ali Babo na wenyewe. And then I come with gileo acid, something of the sort. She was burnt with hot water, trying to steal someone's husband, things like that. Uh, and uh, the most common one is a mechomeka, so that you're burnt. So that one, I'm used to it. Mutu ali amwai ni ambia ni kona kansa, zin mutu ana ananza zako ata kutosi friends wana zako kwacha kwanza vile ili anza kuspread vile ili kwa high school, but friends wengi ni wali niacha. Somebody even remarked that I'd rather have AIDS than look this way. So 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 you get very condescending remarks, and sometimes even within the family or relatives, you actually don't get treated like the normal. Um, members of the, of the relative, the bigger circle. In the bus, when you enter the matatu, no one wants to sit next to you. They will enter, they fill all the other seats. So the last person who has no choice has to sit with you. What we know that is contagious, but vitiligo is not contagious. It cannot spread from one person to another.
ya watu watu mwenye ajui anaweza dhani ni contagious sasa mtu atakia atakia kushika anaweza dhani utampea that those casual practice and those some they also say it's a curse so you are cast you need the community and in some other instances they you face excommunication of sort if you live in a very traditionalized background you can even face excommunication from that community so and then even marriage in itself also it's a bit difficult because somebody feels it will be a transfer of caste from that family to this family and people won't want to engage with you when it comes to things relationship yeah so 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 it's been a bit difficult getting into a relationship that ends up into a marriage for example it's not as easy as for normal people sasa hapo kwa kwa relate na madam ndio kuna shida ndio hata college ndio unajua mtu anakuwa msiana na kuona anasema skin yako siji na kaje anashtuka hata hataki kukuonelesha ndio unajaribu ku make friendships na madam madam anaenda kuna shida sana it takes you to really explain to your partner what exactly you are really suffering from and what people do not understand it's that it's just a discoloration of the skin it's a normal skin that is just losing color but there is really nothing that is so contagious or behind that you are hiding that is so dangerous within ourselves it's only that now you're changing your skin tone is actually changing in a very funny way kuna mwenye ameni understand kuna mwenye anajua nilimwambia na she's just my my friend anajua nilimwambia enda research about fertilizer aka research kama tuko na eh akasoma aka understand na anani accept vile niko eh but it's so hard for someone to accept you the way you are so it's 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 normally a risk um, I'm slow to take in as much as you get to try and try explain for those people you might feel that you're interested in but then when you realize there is an ish ish sort of thing you just back off early enough before the shock comes so, so that's how I've actually managed to to live with my social life with the relationship is I've never taken it to so seriously as I the hurtful parts where people leave you maybe because of your skin condition others uh, the pressure from the family when you have a relationship with someone somebody tells you that the parents can't accept you so it's not it mm-hmm. yeah working to make a living has not been easy either the places i've gone to ask for work they reject me most of the time mm-hmm. yeah Do they give reasons or do... no they actually look for petty excuses mm-hmm. but there is one occasion i remember when i went to ask for a job in a supermarket uh, in parklands and the arab lady told me i can't employ you you're going to infect my customers so i asked her how am i going to infect your customers and the skin condition is not contagious and plus things are packed in papers so how am i going to infect your customers and so she got mad and she told me to leave the place but we will teach as a bog teacher in some schools because i actually thought there was a good reception there and most teachers when uh, they used to lack people who could assist because of the the large students so students were so many within some classes so we'll take those opportunities and engage with the principals and the teachers to have an opportunity to teach in such places so the reception here wasn't as bad in as much as there was always that curiosity whether will you be comfortable to teach this to they might even mock you by the end of the day or they'll jeer at you so those those actually those kind of reactions used to be there but i used to try to manage because at that time i became therapeutic to myself uh, psychosocially i started just finding my own ways of trying to live around but it's not so easy to get an opportunity to a job opportunity it's not as easy I remember even getting into a boardroom for an interview and almost the whole session of that interview only three people were looking at me in the eye but others who were as- asking me questions they were not actually looking me straight they were actually looking down and reading from a script and waiting for me to give them a feedback while looking down they were looking, looking at me straight in the eye so so it it's it, it's actually difficult at sometimes somebody calls you feeling that you've already gotten that job but when you know you present yourself physically and there is that change of again of a decision of not considering you for an opportunity so it actually took
a lot of a great deal of time. And for me, I'd already realized that. And what I used to do, I used to make as many applications as I can to different job offers. There's an instant um, I'd gotten a job somewhere, in a law firm actually, and um, as, a, as a receptionist. So it did work. I worked for like um, two weeks, and then later on they told me I stopped working there. Of, of course they get to be a bit shocked. For the few that we've tried to engage in, um, I've, I've tried getting interacting with. So the, it, as much as the role that I play is not so much client facing, but at some point we, we get to interact with clients. But it's not quite often. It's not a regular activity that I get involved most of the time. Uh, what I will say is how the colleagues relate is is, is sometimes. For the first time when I got into the the job, where the, my first days, my first few weeks. Of course, there is, there's always that weird look, and then um, it, people are not so much, they don't get easily comfortable with you. Uh, let's just say, for me, I've learned to be ignorant even when I was a still a girl. So if I see you don't like being around me or you're behaving funny, I'll just ignore you and pretend that you're not there. I think it is a coping mechanism. I've learned to build that wall slowly. And uh, now it's even much stronger. Yeah, now I can deal with anyone in the streets and not even notice when people are looking at me. I find myself just passing, and then maybe if I'm walking with someone, is when they're telling me, where are these people staring at you so much? Or ah, that person is almost falling down, something like that. So for me, I'm like, I, I'm, I, didn't, I don't even notice sometimes. Most times people form support groups, they are vitiligo support groups, groups in Kenya. If it is on your face, because uh, vitiligo can appear anywhere on the body, um, if it appears on your face and you are particular about how you look, then you can use makeup. There are also some um, people who tattoo pigment onto your skin to camouflage. I socialize freely, but any time I try to socialize, of course I know the negative perception that somebody already has. In Gambia, two are to end with such vitiligo. Vitiligo is, is, is not a disease, it's just a condition. Naina is a shika kila mtu. Sia tini mipe kaya angu imenishika. Vitiligo hata we mwenye kopua, vitiligo ineza kushika. Nikitina kuja. But sasa kitu mbaya, wala adakushati ya wajui kiwa yake, it does not have a kiwa. That's the problem. They stigmatize because some of them don't know. They don't know what it is. They don't know how it comes about. When they ask you a question, how did it just come? Uh, what is wrong? Uh, some are scared even. So they kind of are afraid of asking you, so they kind of stay away from you and look at you from afar. And that is because the awareness about it is not many people know about it. There is no specific cause for the condition, and the research are ongoing but the medications to manage the condition. Nataka watu wajue vitiligo, as in watu wa kwe aware of vitiligo. Vitiligo is, is just a condition and it can attack in each, each person. So nataka watu wajue, wakikuona, wakiniona, nikitembea kwa street, wasinyangalia, vibaya, wachikuniangalia. Vitiligo is just beautiful. I would like people to know what vitiligo is so that to lessen the stigmatization because when people know about the skin condition, they won't stare that much. They'll be like, ah, this is vitiligo, and they move on. But someone who doesn't know will be like, what is this? How, why does she have two colors? And all those questions. What do you hope for in your future? Um, let's just say less staring. <laughs> because uh, sometimes people stay in a very bad way. I'm hoping just to live as normal like any other person. That is my hope. And uh, the other thing is that we are hoping that people will get to understand what vitiligo is.